Iraq continues to flaunt its hostility toward America and to support terror. The Iraqi regime has plotted to develop anthrax and nerve gas and nuclear weapons for over a decade. This is a regime that has already used poison gas to murder thousands of its own citizens, leaving the bodies of mothers huddled over their dead children. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil, arming to threaten the peace of the world by seeking weapons of mass destruction. These regimes pose a grave and growing danger. They could provide these arms to terrorists, giving them the means to match their hatred. They could attack our allies or attempt to blackmail the United States. In any of these cases, the price of indifference would be catastrophic. We'll be deliberate, yet time is not on our side. I will not wait on events while dangers gather. I will not stand by as peril draws closer and closer. The United States of America will not permit the world's most dangerous regimes to threaten us with the world's most destructive weapons. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. Uh, just had a um, breakfast with Vice President Cheney, who, as you all know, has returned uh, from a, a, a lengthy and successful trip to the Middle East. This that uh, the Vice President made, which is a good point, is that this is an administration uh, that when we say we're going to do something, we mean it. That um, we are resolved to fight the war on terror. This isn't a short-term uh, strategy for us. That uh, we understand history has called us in action, and we're not going to miss this opportunity to make the world more peaceful and more free. For much of the last century, America's defense relied on the Cold War doctrines of deterrence and containment. In some cases, those strategies still apply. But new threats also require new thinking. Containment is not possible when unbalanced dictators with weapons of mass destruction can deliver those weapons on missiles or secretly provide them to terrorist allies. We must take the battle to the enemy, disrupt his plans, and confront the worst threats before they emerge. In the world we have entered, the only path to safety is the path of action, and this nation will act. Uh, we continue to see reports on the state of planning uh, to get rid of Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Um, uh, I know it's unlikely that you'll share any details with us, though we'd be delighted to hear them, sir. Somebody else thinks they are. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder, Mr. President, regardless of when or how, is it your firm intention to get rid of Saddam Hussein in Iraq? Yes. And how hard do you think it will be? It's the stated policy of this government to have regime change. And it hasn't changed. And uh, we'll use all tools at our disposal to do so. One thing that has to factor in is the growing number of U.S. allies, Russia, Germany, Bahrain, now Canada, who say that if you go to war with Saddam, you're going to go alone. Does, there, does the American military have the capability to prosecute this war well, alone? Well, if you're asking, are you asking about Iraq? That when the subject didn't come up in this meeting. And, uh, and, and but having said that, uh, we're, we take all threats seriously. And uh, we will continue to consult with our friends and allies. I know there's this kind of intense speculation that seems to be going on, a kind of a, I don't know how you would describe it. It's, it's kind of a churning. Frenzy. Frenzy is how the secretary would describe it. <laughs> uh, but the subject didn't come up. The American people know my position and that we will look at all options and we will consider uh, all technologies available to us and diplomacy and intelligence. But one thing is for certain is that this administration agrees that Saddam Hussein is a threat. We just heard the prime minister talk about uh, the new report. Uh, I would remind you that when the inspectors first went into Iraq and were denied, finally denied access, uh, a report came out of the atomic, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 IAEA, that they were six months away from developing a weapon. I don't know what more evidence we need. 
Our generation has now heard history's call, and we will answer it. America has entered a great struggle that tests our strength and even more our resolve. Our nation is patient and steadfast. We continue to pursue the terrorists in cities and camps and caves across the earth. We are joined by a great coalition of nations to rid the world of terror. And we will not allow any terrorist or tyrant to threaten civilization with weapons of mass murder. The conduct of the Iraqi regime is a threat to the authority of the United Nations and a threat to peace. Iraq has answered a decade of UN demands with a decade of defiance. If the Iraqi regime wishes peace, it will immediately and unconditionally forswear, disclose, and remove or destroy all weapons of mass destruction. If Iraq's regime defies us again, the world must move deliberately, decisively, to hold Iraq to account. But the purposes of the United States should not be doubted. The Security Council resolutions will be enforced. The just demands of peace and security will be met, or action will be unavoidable. Uh, Mr. President, uh, are you going to send Congress uh, the proposed resolution today? I am. Are you asking for a blank check, sir? I am, uh, I am sending a, a suggested language for a resolution. I've asked for Congress's support to uh, enable the administration to keep the peace. And uh, we look forward to a good constructive uh, debate in Congress. I appreciate the fact that the leadership recognizes we've got to move before the elections and uh, look forward to working with them. Okay, thank you all. How important is it that that resolution give you an authorization to use force? That'll be part of the resolution, authorization to use force. If you want to keep the peace, you've got to have the authorization to use force. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. But I, you know, there's no... I, I, let me guess. Uh, the United States is guilty. The world doesn't understand. We don't have any weapons of mass destruction. It's the same old song and dance that we've heard for 11 long years. And the United Nations Security Council must show backbone, must step up and hold this regime to account. Otherwise, the United States and some of our friends will do so. Mr. President, do you believe that Saddam Hussein is a bigger threat to the United States than Al-Qaeda? Uh, <laughs> that's a, uh, uh, that is a um, interesting question. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of something humorous to say. Um, <laughs> but I can't when I think about Al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein. They're, they're, they're both risks. They're both dangerous. Uh, the difference, of course, is that Al-Qaeda uh, likes to hijack governments. Uh, Saddam Hussein uh, is a dictator of a government. Uh, Al-Qaeda hides Saddam Hussein doesn't. But the danger is, is that they work in concert. The danger is, is that Al-Qaeda becomes an extension of Saddam's madness and his hatred and his capacity to uh, extend weapons of mass destruction around the world. Both of them need to be dealt with. The war on terror, is, you can't distinguish between Al-Qaeda and Saddam when you talk about the war on terror. We've just concluded a really good meeting with members of the United States Congress uh, to discuss our national security and discuss how best to keep the peace. We are moving toward a strong resolution. And all of us and many others in Congress are united in our determination to confront an urgent threat to America. According to the British government, the Iraqi regime could launch a biological or chemical attack in as little as 45 minutes after the order were given. Is the U.S. in any way exaggerating or misleading the American public in regard to the potential threat posed by Iraq? Um, 
is, is the I U.S. government. You mean the senior members of, of the administration? Not to my knowledge. And, and if I knew of an instance, I would certainly correct it. Saddam Hussein is a homicidal dictator who is addicted to weapons of mass destruction. We agree that the Iraqi dictator must not be permitted to threaten America and the world with horrible poisons and diseases and gases and atomic weapons. We've also discovered through intelligence that Iraq has a growing fleet of manned and unmanned aerial vehicles that could be used to disperse chemical or biological weapons across broad areas. We're concerned that Iraq is exploring ways of using these UAVs for missions targeting the United States. Saddam Hussein has held numerous meetings with Iraqi nuclear scientists, a group he calls his nuclear mujahideen, his nuclear holy warriors. If the Iraqi regime is able to produce, buy, or steal an amount of highly enriched uranium a little larger than a single softball, it could have a nuclear weapon in less than a year. Facing clear evidence of peril, we cannot wait for the final proof, the smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. The dictator of Iraq is a student of Stalin, using murder as a tool of terror and control within his own cabinet, within his own army, and even within his own family. On Saddam Hussein's orders, opponents have been decapitated. Wives and mothers of political opponents have been systematically raped as a method of intimidation. And political prisoners have been forced to watch their own children being tortured. Failure to act would embolden other tyrants, allow terrorists access to new weapons and new resources, and make blackmail a permanent feature of world events. Later this week, the United States Congress will vote on this matter. I have asked Congress to authorize the use of America's military, if it proves necessary, to enforce UN Security Council demands. The resolution I'm about to sign symbolizes the united purpose of our nation, expresses the considered judgment of the Congress, and marks an important event in the life of America. The 107th Congress is one of the few called by history to authorize military action to defend our country and the cause of peace. Congress has now authorized the use of force. I have not ordered the use of force. I hope the use of force will not become necessary. Yet confronting the threat posed by Iraq is necessary by whatever means that requires.